got its own cricket pitch. All good houses should have their own cricket pitch. Built in the 1760s, Harewood House lies 200 miles north of London and has been dazzling visitors since its creation. And there it is. It kind of just pokes out the landscape. It's properly impressive. With this Georgian manor, you won't be short of space for a knees up or short of something to read if you just want to put your feet up. But you might want to avoid getting stuck with the job of cutting the grass. Apparently it was the handiwork of the dream team in 18th century home design. First impressions from my end, they, they probably got it about right. Ever since its creation, Herbert has drawn the very best artists and craftsmen to its halls. Apparently, its initial build clocked in at more than £25,000. That's almost £40 million in today's money. And as you wander from room to room, it's not hard to see where all that money went. Look at these walls. They're incredible. And the artwork gracing the walls is more national gallery than private house. From Renaissance painter Titian to landscape master Turner. I bet that Sir Joshua Reynolds sews that. I mean, this is a roll of honour. <laughs> it's, it's like a complete who's who. For the stable block alone, over 150,000 bricks were needed. In the main house, Dodson, the bricklayer, created half a mile of chimney tunnels. The plasterers laid almost three acres of flooring, and all the while, Edwin was keeping his eye on the bills coming in. There's a letter to long-suffering Popplewell from 1756 talking about the enormous and extravagant costs of his design team. I mean, really, he's only just ordered the most opulent, finest house in the whole of the land. Why should it be so expensive? Six years after construction began, initial building work was complete and responsibility for the build passed to interior designer Robert Adam. Adam was known for his integrated style of interior design, where all aspects of a room, from the colour of the walls to the shape of the door handles, were designed to complement each other perfectly. Adam and his two brothers created what is still known as the Adam style. They introduced a fashion for curved walls, elaborate plaster work, and championed the use of striking colour schemes. So the colours, you can see in this painting, the really bright purples and blues yes. are reflected in the Robert Adam colour scheme. It all comes together really beautifully and you see little motifs which are repeated across the plaster work, across the carvings, across the furniture. The colour scheme, I mean, it's still pretty bright today, but it would have been really quite gaudy. It would have been really in your face back then. It would have been really bright. This carpet, this Axminster, was part of Robert Adams' original design. Okay. And actually the whole geometry of it uh, is reflecting the ceiling. All of the rounders, all of the symmetrical detail, all of the swags are all taken from classical architecture in Rome and brought into this new style. What's a swag? The swags, are the plaster detail around the cornice. You see the urns and then the yes. swags. Yeah. And you see that reflected even on the carpet, on yeah. the furniture. In fact, once you get your swag eye in, the level of Adam's integrated design becomes even more incredible. He not only ensured his artists use colours that would match his paintwork, he even got them to include his swag shape in the paintings themselves. Now that's attention to detail. It creates a really harmonious design. I love it.